My name is Vitaly, and today we're going to talk about building invincible applications using Zeo and Temporal. Um, let's start with a simple story about how, how, how does it, what does it mean to be a programmer. Yep, and that's me doing my regular programmer's routine, writing functional Scala code. Then my boss arrives and says, hey, Vitaly, build me a cryptocurrency exchange platform. Uh, I think for a few minutes, and usually our conversation ends up with my boss explaining me what does, it, does he mean by a crypto exchange. Yeah, my boss, crypto exchange platform. Um, what does he want me to implement? Uh, well, if there, if, if there is a customer called Alice, she, uh, she wants to sell her cryptocurrency using our platform. She comes and says, hey, I want to sell my crypto, uh, cryptocurrency, and Alice comes and uh, wants to put uh, an exchange order into our crypto platform. Then, uh, in this case, if another customer, uh, like Bob, arrives and says, hey, Alice, sell me all the cryptocurrency you have, in this case, our crypto platform will take uh, the cryptocurrency from Alice's crypto account to, to the platform's internal one. And that's it. After that, Bob needs to transfer uh, his money to Alice using a regular bank transfer. And that's how he do, do it. Yep. After that, uh, Bob notifies Alice via the application that he actually sent the, the regular money. Um, Alice needs to confirm that. And after, our crypto platform completely transfers the crypto funds to Bob's crypto account. And that's it. This is the whole business process. Uh, with all of this knowledge uh, given to me, my boss wish me good luck and disappears. Uh, okay then, uh, as a software developer, I start uh, designing the solution I need to implement. By first uh, designing the database model, integrating with some message queues, with third-party APIs for notifications or whatever. Then I provide an API for my service. Uh, but after that, I realize that I have first issues to solve, like retrying failures in case something goes wrong in this complicated process. Um, in case something goes wrong, for instance, when Bob accepts the, uh, the exchange order, but but disappears and didn't provide the confirmation that he sent the money, uh, we need to roll back this process and give Alice her money back. I also need my system to be scalable enough so that it will support more users or more business flows in case our crypto platform will expand for, uh, for other countries with different laws and so on. Um, and at some point of time, I, reala I realized that um, I forgot the business requirements my boss told me about. I only remember a bit of details. Um, and that's me trying to remind the whole story my boss told me about. Um, the problem is, as a developer, we, uh, I often focus more on the technical details of the solution rather than the business problem I should solve. Please raise your hands up if you have the same problem as me. Yeah. So, but the question is, how to solve it? Um, well, uh, there are a couple of solutions called workflow engines, which allows you to focus more on, the, on developing the business process and solving the business problem, while keeping all of the unnecessary technical details and uh, handling this com complex resiliency and retry problems by itself. There are a few of them. And today we're gonna, about, we're gonna talk about Temporal, which was built uh, by ex-Uber developers. Uh, and this, like, in my opinion, uh, it's the best for regular problem, programmers because it's not a low-code platform. Uh, well, with Temporal and Zio, uh, it, it becomes easy now to describe the whole business process as, as this tiny for comprehension consisting of uh, the description, step by step, putting the order, waiting until it's accepted, and so on. 
Who wants to have such code in production? Yeah, great. So, uh, but first, we need to know what is temporal itself. Mm. Well, uh, it consists of two main building blocks. The first one is workflow, is a description of the business process. And the second one is the activity, which does all the heavy lifting, hard work, and uh, it encapsulates each uh, technical detail of your solution. Uh, usually, activity does error-prone operations, complex algorithms, and interacts with external APIs or third-party systems. While workflow consists of those activities, it invokes them. Uh, it also manages the state of the business process, like the concrete stage of our exchange, cryptocurrency exchange process. Um, the workflow itself consists of three main particles. The first one is the workflow method, which is the business logic itself. Uh, the second one is a signal method, which allows to interact with the workflow from the outside of the workflow, sending some events. And the third one is a query method, which allows you to check the current state of the running workflow. Uh, having those built-in blocks, temporal platform is allowed to execute your program in the following way. Uh, it takes the first activity uh, described in the workflow, like putting the exchange order into our system. It tries to execute it, and when it succeeds, Temporal Platform writes the, the event into the storage about that the step succeeded. It marks it as succeeded. Then it sees that uh, the workflow uh, should wait for some external events to happen, happen like uh, for the order to be accepted. In this case, Temporal Platform suspends the workflow execution completely for some, for, for some time or until an event happens. Then, after some time, uh, the, the workflow received a signal that Bob accepted the exchange order. So the Templar platform writes that event into the storage and marks those steps as succeeded. Later on, there may, there, there may be an activity which, which may fail. But it's not a big deal for the temporal platform because it has all of the previous uh, results stored into the event storage, and temporal platform is allowed to reply the whole, the whole workflow state up to this point, retry this particular failing activity, and eventually it will succeed. The temporal platform will store the result into the storage, and that's it. Uh, and then it will continue this workflow for um, uh, The temporal platform itself consists of the cluster, which operates workflow, schedules workflow in the execution. Uh, from the event storage, which, which is used to store workflow results and activity results. It also consists of worker processes, which actually execute those workflows we define and run. And those worker processes picks up uh, workflow tasks from a task queue. Uh, if we need to scale the, our program, we basically just scale either the storage by adding more data nodes, or we add more worker processes so that they can handle more workflows. Um, but, how do we, but how do we actually build, uh, build uh, our workflows using Temporal and Scala? Mm. We start by defining so-called activity interface. It's a regular Scala trait with a bunch of methods. Uh, the main requirement is that uh, this trait should have uh, an activity interface annotation. Then, when implementing this activity uh, in the method implementations, we are allowed to run uh, arbitrary zero code inside, which is in this case just simple logging. Uh, the second part is defining the workflow interface. The same process, define a trade, but with the workflow activity interface. And then you need to define these three main parts, workflow method, query method, signal method. Um, and this is the high-level workflow implementation. 
to, to be able to interact with activities from inside the workflow, you need to create a, an activity step, which you should provide uh, with an activity interface, which you are required to use, and then configure some resiliency, like timeouts for, for a particular activity to run, retry options, and so on. And the second part is representing the business process state. In this case, exchange order state is, uh, represents the, the, the current stage of the business process. Um, after that, we are able to implement the workflow method with those steps, like putting order and so on, uh, which, will, which we will look at later. Let's dive a bit deeper into the implementation of the workflow. Um, this is the first step of our business logic, uh, putting the exchange order into our systems and those showing it for, for the rest of our customers. Um, it consists of invoking the activity method, and then after it succeeds, uh, changing the exchange order state so that it becomes the created stage. The second part is the interesting one. Um, uh, our business process requires to wait for another customer to accept this order. Thus, using this await until method, we completely suspend the workflow execution uh, for a given timeout or until a certain condition met. In this case, the or our workflow state becomes accepted. Um, and later, after either uh, the timeout exceeds or the condition is met, we actually handle uh, our current workflow state. And if it becomes accepted, then we invoke the second activity, those notifying Alice that Bob accepted her, her cryptocurrency exchange, and continue the workflow execu execution normally. Uh, or otherwise, we mark the workflow, uh, the business process as cancelled, and finish the workflow execution. Um, how the workflow actually receives those external signals? Uh, by implementing the workflow method, uh, in this case, you see that in the implementation, we just update the workflow state, making it accepted. And later on, our workflow method will catch up with those updates and continue to process. Um, and the most interesting part, how, to, how do we handle uh, uh, actions that should be rolled back in, in, cert, uh, in certain conditions, uh, like holding the cryptocurrency. Uh, in case Bob uh, doesn't confirm that the bank transfer, we should give Alice her crypto funds back. So that's where sagas come to the rescue. Uh, we could create sagas by providing the, the critical activity, and then the compensative action, which will, in this case, give Alice her crypto funds back. Uh, Saga is a regular monad so that, so that we can continue to work with it using map or for comprehension. The for comprehension I showed you before is just a composition of multiple sagas. Uh, and so on, step by step, you implement the business process. But how to actually execute them? We have the description, but we need to start it. Um, in order to execute them, you should keep in mind uh, these two concepts. Like the first one, that temporal cluster schedules uh, workflows for execution to the worker processes. And there are also client applications which actually start workflows by com communicating with the temporal cluster. They send signals to that workflows and then they query the workflow state. So when, to, in order to run the workflow, uh, you start with the worker definition. Um, in this case, it is required to use uh, the worker factory, which creates workers uh, by providing them with the name of the task queue. Then it is required to provide those workers with the activity implementations, which will be used by the workflows inside this worker. Uh, and then, you need to provide workflow interfaces and the workflow implementations. Uh, after providing those, um, you, you are then able to start the worker, and then they will run, uh, eventually pick up events, uh, tasks from the task queue, uh, 
And inside this use method, you, you can also add arbitrary server code for your business logic. Uh, and then let's go to the client side of the application. Uh, in order to uh, start workflows, the first thing you need is a workflow client, which interacts with the temporal cluster, so scheduling new workflows for execution. Um, to create a running workflow, uh, the first thing you need is to specify the workflow interface, which describes the business process you, you want to run, uh, specifying the task queue and the, the, a unique ID for the workflow. This, this is basically the unique uh, ID of our exchange order. Then you configure the, the resiliency, timeout for a particular run attempt for the workflow itself with all of the retries, retrying options, which can be more flexible, but in this case, you just retry it three times. And then you build it. Having this workflow stop, you're able to run, to, to start the workflow process asynchronously uh, by invoking the workflow method inside the workflow stop start function. It will submit a workflow task to the queue, worker will pick it up and, and eventually execute it. Uh, to send signals to the running workflow, uh, you need a new abstraction, which is called workflow stop proxy. Uh, it allows you to interact with running workflow by specifying the unique ID of the workflow. And having it, it, is, it becomes now simple to just invoke the signal method and provide the running workflow with external events. Um, the same holds for uh, checking the workflow state. You just invoke the query method inside the query function, and that's how you get the, the current stage of the business process. And that's it. Um, am I alone in the temporal fun club? Um, well, no, because Netflix, Snapchat, Stripe, HashiCorp, and Coinbase all of these companies use Temporal for their own purposes, like Netflix for, for continuous delivery, Stripe for transactions, Coinbase for crypto, and so on, and so on, and so on. It, it, it simplifies their business process a lot. To sum up, uh, what is the power of Temporal? Temporal keeps your focus on the business tasks rather than technical details. Uh, the business process itself, the most important part, important part of your solution, is described as a workflow. Uh, all of the technical details, all of the heavy work are encapsulated inside activities. And all of the resiliency, retries, compensative transactions, all of them are, man are managed by the temporal platform. So, the problem solved with no hardcore development required. Yep. Um, here you can check uh, the website of the Zio Temporal Library, which allows to, in, to, inter, to work with Temporal Cluster by using our favorite Zio Library. Uh, on that website, you will be able to find the full example of the code I shown you today. And probably the most important part of my presentation, uh, while we enjoy the Scala conference today, uh, Ukrainian people do struggle from Russian missile attacks hitting critical infrastructure. Uh, it's sad, but people do have electricity just a few hours a day. Often they don't have heating for, for a few days. So I will really appreciate if you can donate any, any amount of money to our government fund supporting uh, rebuilding the infrastructure or all of the injured people. And that's it. Thank you so much.